Hello everyone, I'm Alex from Barefaced and this is the first of a series which I think we'll call something like Alex Explains and in this I'm going to attempt to demystify what's really going on in terms of making sound and making music when we play electric guitar or bass. So, it all comes down to the brain and what mood we're in because we're kind of big computers in wild animals, yeah? Humans. So, this is what we hear, this is how we generate the sound, and this is the chain that gets to what we think we've heard and what, how it makes us feel. So this is what we think we've heard, this is how we feel because of it, and this how we feel because of it also affects how we, what we're hearing, how we're feeling affects what we're hearing. It's an emotional thing. So the sound comes in through our ears, our ears are basically not very good microphones, but they're good enough and they're all we've got. And what our ears hear, that, that then gets processed by our brains, which are very, very good processors of sound and make the sense of the sound from what's coming in and you know, appreciate it properly as music. We also feel the music. You know this, stand in front of a bass rig, stand in front of a subwoofer stack, stand in front of a loud guitar app, you can feel it, not just through your ears, through your whole body. I noticed this most obviously in that it was a fundamental thing to how I interacted with the music when I was in my last band and I was singing and playing bass and the bass amp was not working properly in the rehearsal studio so I had to run through the bass through some crack little PA speakers and I found I couldn't sing and play at the same time without losing the groove because for me to stay on the groove whilst my brain was thinking about singing and it would appear my ears were listening to the singing, I couldn't feel the groove so my fingers kind of went out of time. It was weird. The sound that is reaching us is the air that's immediately around us. So it's the air here by our ears, yeah, and it's the air that's hitting all of our body because like I say, I also am not a great fan of listening to music through headphones. I don't like the removal of that sensation. There is then the room, because if we're hearing sound from somewhere, it has to reach us, and unless we're outdoors, and in which case outdoors changes things, you know what it's like when you're at a big festival like last spring and the wind blows slightly and everything goes awry because the wind is moving the sound in different ways. If you're further from the stage, that you don't get as much of the high end, that's why they have the repeater stacks, but even so, air messes with the sound, the environment messes with the sound. There is then the air around the speakers. So if you've got a speaker box, be it a bass cab, be it a guitar rig, whatever it is, what matters is not the speakers moving, but how the speakers move the air that's around them. So the speakers move the air, and then that air moves, the room interacts with it, and then that means you then get the air around you moving. You then have the speaker, speakers, however many speakers, whatever they are, however they're designed, whether they're being guitar speakers, bass speakers, a mix of the two, all sorts of strange rigs, and the box that the speaker is in. Both of those interact in complicated ways. You can't talk about speakers without talking about the cabs. Speakers do not work very well without cabs. Obviously a cab doesn't make any sound unless it's got a speaker in it but the speaker and the cabinet are deeply intertwined. They are being driven by a power amplifier, so that's making the large amounts of volts and amps, you know, typically tens or hundreds or even thousands of watts to make the sound happen. Um, even if an amp is rated with a really high power rating, um, a lot of the time it's not putting out anywhere near that much power. If you don't play a note, it doesn't put out any sound. You know, so it's not going to any power. That power amp is being driven by the preamp. That's dealing with smaller amounts of volts and much, much, much smaller amounts of amps. So it's, there is electrical potential, but there isn't really uh, any significant current flowing. You've got these very high impedance loads. and So voltages are moving, but there isn't really power happening. The power comes from the power amp, hence the name. The preamp, that's getting signal from the pickups. So I've got 
some of these things over here. We've got a guitar amp which has got a preamp and a power amp built into it. There's a guitar cap lurking here and we've got a cool little bass. Um, short scale Reverend Watt Plower 2. So here we are, we've got our pickups. So the pickups are sensing the movements of the strings. They actually do that by magnetising the strings above the pole pieces and then the magnetised strings generate electricity in the coils within the pickups. And then that tiny amount of electricity heads out to the preamp. You've got the strings. The strings are mounted on the instrument. Now, this is an interactive system. You pluck the string, the string vibrates and it sends energy into the body and neck of the instrument and then that energy comes back into the string and round and round it goes. And then the last piece of the puzzle is your hands, which may be holding a pick or not, but whatever they're doing, they are energising the strings and they are choosing, well, your hands aren't choosing what to do, your brain is choosing what to do, and that's what gets us to the key point, that you hear the sound coming out and your brain tells your hands what to do. So your hands move the string and the strings interact. So your hands interact with the strings, the strings interact with the instrument. So obviously the strings aren't going to work on their own, they need to be tensioned. You've got to have the frets or a fretboard at least, or fingerboard if there's no frets to, to choose the notes you're playing. Obviously the strings are all tuned to different frequencies. Um, different strings have different sounds. Those strings interact with the pickups. The pickups then send signal to the preamp. Now when I say preamp, that could include all your effects pedals, you know, reverbs, distortions, weirder stuff like delays and things like that. Basically everything that's working at instrument level or line level. So small voltages, not tiny voltages like microphones, but small voltages and tiny currents. That then goes to our power amp, bigger voltages, much bigger currents. That then goes to our speakers, which are mounted in cabinets to make them work properly. Those speakers then move air. They move the air that's immediately adjacent to them and the vibrations run through the air. Some of those vibrations come straight to your ears, some of them head off round the room, bounce off the walls and come back to you. A speaker will sound completely different in a different room and in a really dead room. A classic example is when you sound check at a gig and then the audience turn up and everything sounds completely different because people are very good at absorbing sonic energy. So then the air that's around the cab interacts with the room, then the air around you is what interacts with you and you will notice this if you turn your hi-fi up, not even loud, and then go and sit in different places in the room. It's very obvious, particularly if you shove your head right in a corner, um, but way off axis and then put your head right in front of the speaker so you're on axis. The latter is much, much brighter, the former is much bassier and much less bright. So your ears and body perceive the sound and then that sends signals to your brain and then how you're feeling affects how you perceive that. So that, in a nutshell, is how electric guitars and electric basses work. They're obviously different to acoustic instruments because we have magnetic pickups which do different things and magnetic pickups which tend to then be interacting with amplifiers. Well, they have to be interacting with amplifiers but acoustic instruments could be working with amplifiers and pedals but they don't tend to be used in the same way. So what I thought I would do next is drill into each of these I don't want to go deep into the engineering or physics of it, I want to do this in a way that fellow musicians, as opposed to fellow engineers, can understand. Because, frankly, only a small proportion of you will be engineers, but I imagine all of you watching this are musicians. If you're not, hello! Um, get an instrument and start playing it. Um, it's fun. So we'll go through and we'll look at how each of these affects what you're doing musically. The joy with music is once you're really playing it, your brain doesn't even get involved, not in a conscious way. It all happens at a sort of subconscious level. It's this state of flow. You might have to get involved occasionally in thinking about the changes and, you know, 
you know, technical parts. A lot of the time you just get into the groove and that's what I particularly enjoy as a bass player. But yeah, um, losing yourself in the music, getting constantly lost in this glorious cycle. And that thing you can, must remember is this and this, brain and hands, is the only bit you get to control on the gig. The rest of it, that can't really happen in the moment. Yes, you could be using some effects pedals or twisting some knobs you know, in this sort of pre ampy area. You could be switching between pickups, you know, da -da 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 -da, like on that. But essentially, these are all fixed and they can be changed through your own decisions when you're choosing gear, when you're setting up gear, when you're configuring gear, when you're learning how to use gear. But if you get all that right, and I intend to give you information to help you get that right, then this bit, the important bit, the musician-y bit, you can get on with doing this much better because you've sorted all this stuff out so music can happen without the equipment getting in the way. And that is really what my mission has been here. So, whether you are rocking or not, rock on. I will see you next time.